It doesn't matter how nonsensical WWE storylines get, at least the in-ring product is usually first class. In this day and age, almost every wrestler on the roster is on top of their game and will provide us with an entertaining few minutes between the ropes, no matter how terrible the build-up has been. Having said that, WWE produce so much content these days that it's inevitable they will get it wrong on occasion. 2021 was no different, as WWE put out more matches than ever, so let's have a look at those stinkers from the last 12 months in more detail. A recurring theme in this list is going to be hugely competent performers being booked in downright stupid positions, and that's definitely the case with my number 5 pick. Bianca Belair was supposed to defend the SmackDown Women's title against Sasha Banks, however Sasha declined to appear, so Carmella was booked as her replacement on the night. Then all of a sudden, Becky Lynch returned after a year away to have her baby, and we were all really happy, because we love Becky Lynch and have missed her greatly. What could have been an epic SummerSlam match between the two was ruined when Lynch turned heel and steamrolled through Belair in just 26 seconds to lift the title. Lynch absolutely squashed Belair and destroyed all of the momentum that she'd been building up for months before. It just made zero sense to make Belair look this week after investing so much time in her in the months before. It was a very upsetting moment for us all. In typical fashion, WWE threw all of their remaining female competitors who had nothing else to do at WrestleMania into a big gimmick tag team match, and it was quite bad. Mandy Rose slipping on her arse as she walked down the ramp just about says it all, when that is the most entertaining moment in the entire thing. Rushed in-ring work interspersed with overly rehearsed spots for each of the women left us feeling very cold indeed watching this one. Regrettably, this would be the last WrestleMania moment for many of the women involved in this match, as a bunch of them would end up getting released later in the year during WWE's mass firings. I really hate supernatural bullshit in wrestling. Anything that asks me to suspend my disbelief any further than the usual believe these two people are fighting for real, even though you know it's predetermined thing, is a stretch too far for me. Even as a kid when The Undertaker was shooting lightning from his fingertips, would I let that shit slide in small doses? And that was only because it was the freaking Undertaker. Unfortunately, the latter part of this list is going to be dominated with this kind of nonsense. The absolute shower of crap that surrounded Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss at the start of this year is best forgotten, and since Wyatt's release, luckily, we will be able to forget it going forward as well, but that doesn't mean Orton vs Bliss didn't happen. Inexplicably, Bliss beat the 14-time world champion Randy Orton in less than 5 minutes after a bit of supernatural nonsense. In the end, it would all be a backdrop for the return of The Fiend and as a setup for the next match in this list. History told us that Randy Orton vs The Fiend at WrestleMania 37 was going to be bad. Let's not forget their previous encounter in the House of Horrors at Payback 2017 for a precursor to this one. Luckily, it went less than six minutes long on the grandest stage of them all. And if the women's tag team turmoil match was the worst match of night one of WrestleMania 37, this travesty takes the Slammy Award for possibly worst match of the entire card, not just night two. This was a terrible way to open the show on the second night, and not even Orton's special white pants could save proceedings. At this point in Wyatt's career, WWE had spiralled into absolute nonsense territory as Alexa Bliss appeared at ringside alongside a massive jack-in-the-box. That's the box that Wyatt leapt out of to begin the match. 
all of the lights in the arena turned red for some reason and blah 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 blah. Such intelligence insulting rubbish. In many ways, Wyatt's unexpected release later in the year was a blessing in disguise and a kind of mercy killing for us all. Speaking of intelligence insulting rubbish, let's move on to our final match of this list. The worst match of 2021, in my opinion. And in 30 years of being a wrestling fan, I have sat through some absolute shite in my time. But this ridiculous way to promote Batista's Army of the Dead movie, and the sponsor, by the way, for WrestleMania Backlash, was brain dead, literally. Damien Priest and The Miz needed one last match to finally bring their feud to a close, and it's a real shame that WWE took this route of shameless promotion in order to do it, especially after how unexpectedly great the match involving Bad Bunny was and The Miz and Damien Priest at WrestleMania. Zombies surrounded the ring and acted as undead lumberjacks of sorts, as Damien Priest and The Miz wrestled in the ring. Usually the phrase, The Miz was devoured by zombies, would be met with joy, but unfortunately, it was back on TV the following week. In this match, if you can call it that, The Miz ended up tearing his ACL. And what a worthless way to sacrifice months of your career this match must have felt for him. Absolutely atrocious rubbish. So, here is to 2022. Let's hope we get served something a little bit better than this next year by WWE, but I very much doubt that's going to happen. <laughs>